But now, the fun actually begins, especially if you're a fan of matrix algebra. We're going to capture all of these steps as matrix products. Remember that just about everything, anything meaningful in linear algebra can be expressed as a matrix product. This procedure as well. And what linear algebra likes to do, especially matrix algebra, is to combine things. Not think of things as three individual vectors, but as a three by three matrix. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to relate this three by three matrix, the original one, to the three by three matrix whose columns are these vectors. And the steps that we took will try to capture by matrix as matrix multiplication steps. And each one of the steps, as you will see, is of course an elementary matrix. And because we're pretty good at elementary matrices, maybe we'll combine some of them into one step if we can do it in our head. Okay, so let me write down the original matrix and the eventual matrix as far apart from each other as possible. And I'll also try to keep them small because it was one, two, three, four, five, six steps. We won't need six matrices, but let's have as much space as we could possibly need. So let's, you, do guys, you guys do the same thing. Let me write down the matrices. Here is the original one, A. Now let's think about the steps that we applied to the vectors. Well, this one's boring. We'll start with this one. As an operation on a matrix. Look what we actually did. In column wise. And I kind of had thought this through before that things are now happening to columns. If you think back to Gaussian elimination and the LU decompositions, things were being done to rows. So these elementary matrices were being put in front of the matrix. But because we were doing something to the columns of this matrix, now the operations are going on the right. And the first operation was subtract three of column one from column two. Am I right? Subtract three from column one. Subtract three of column one from column two. There is an elementary matrix that does that. Remember studying elementary matrices and my telling you that they're very important for so many reasons. Number one, you use them. Number two, they really help you understand matrix multiplication. And number three, they lead to very nice mental puzzles that help you understand everything better and increase your mental RAM. Well, this goes with point one. They are everywhere because these linear combination modifications of sets of vectors are very common. So remember what matrix it is? Basically what you just said, what you just said you have to do to the identity. That's how you get that matrix. And so the first step, you start with the identity. And what did I just say? I said subtract three of the first column from the second. So you have to retain what you just said, repeat it, and do it to the identity matrix. And what I said was subtract three of the first column from the second. On this already new matrix, remember it was very important in Gram-Schmidt that you don't use A and B in the third step. No, you already use A1 and B1. It was very important from the algorithm point of view. And fortunately, or use whatever word you want, the formalism of matrix multiplication reflects that because this matrix that reflects an action will now act on this combined matrix where three of the first column was already subtracted from the second column. So by just looking at this step and saying, you know, it was twice of the first column minus one of the second column is perfectly valid because it is already using the new vectors. And here, we already have the new vectors. So the steps are, from the third column, add two of the first and subtract the second. Add two of the first and subtract the second. Are you guys with me? Add two, so now I'm just repeating it. Add two of the first, subtract the, the second. 
Do you see how there is a benefit to putting things together? Matrix algebra teaches us that over and over and over again. Does it reduce the number of operations? It does not. It probably increases the number of operations because there are all of these zeros that the computer might not know about. And it'll be doing a lot of multiplication by zero unless you're very smart. Is it less work? No, it's more work. Is it worth it? Absolutely it's worth it because it's just such amazing structure. And when you translate something into the language of algebra, it takes on a power of its own. And you can do algebraic things with it and it's just amazing for lack of a better word. So that's the two orthogonalization steps. Now the three orthonormalization steps will combine all together into one. Okay, they were divide the first column by five, the second column by five square root of two, and the third column by five square root of two. You know what elementary matrix does this. It's the one with these numbers on the diagonal. That's multiplication. And now, this is a valid equal sign. This product equals this matrix. When you talk algorithmically, you have to say, we started with this matrix, and after a few steps, we arrived at this matrix. But with algebra, you can put an equal sign. OK. And these matrices all have wonderful names. Well, this one, the one we start with is A. <laughs> That's an amazing name. A. That one, the one we end up with, a matrix whose columns are orthonormal with respect to the standard inner product. Any other book that says orthonormal uh, without specifying the inner product means that inner product. So if it's omitted, it's that one. A matrix with orthonormal columns is called Q. These three just like in the case of the LU decomposition, get combined into one. And what is it called? R, except this is not R. Because what we want to do is say A equals QR. We want to have a decomposition of A. So this will be R inverse. This is the inverse of R. And that's why QR is called QR. It's just the labels for the matrices. Just like LU, lower, upper. Here it's Q. I don't know why Q for a matrix with orthonormal columns. And R. I don't know why R. Because it's triangular. That's why R. OK. So this will be R inverse. R inverse. So we still have to calculate R. It won't be a big deal. We'll do it in a moment. And the only reason why I'll do it is to remind you of the elementary matrix logic because you don't have to multiply them all together and then invert the resulting matrix. You can do something much smarter and of course I'll remind you what it is. And so we have A equals QR. Here is where it goes. A equals QR. And now you're ready for the worst terminology in the history of mathematics. What do you call a matrix whose columns are orthonormal? Orthonormal matrix? Would that, be a good, would that be a good thing to call it, orthonormal matrix? So I agree, but it's called an orthogonal matrix, even though its columns are orthonormal. And a matrix whose columns are ortho orthogonal without being orthonormal is nothing, doesn't have a name. It's not a very special matrix, as you'll find out. This is a magical matrix. If you review my lectures on lemma, you will see, uh, you will see my referring to a certain fact in linear algebra as a gift from God. So there is, a, there is a consequence, a corollary of that gift from God, which will manifest itself here, which is just amazing. So this matrix is magical. If its columns were merely orthogonal, the magic goes away completely. So we'll get to that in a moment. So A is an arbitrary matrix. Q is called orthogonal because its columns are orthonormal. And these, when I multiply them all together, well, I already mentioned it, but it's clear it'll be upper triangular. 
because each one of these is upper triangular, including this one. A diagonal matrix is both upper and lower triangular. So the result will be upper triangular, and of course the inverse will be upper triangular. So let's complete the problem, and then we'll have a just by complete the problem I mean figure out R. And then we'll have a chance to talk about orthogonal matrices a little bit, which is a whole lot of fun. And we have a whole lot of time to do it. Okay, so how do you find R when you have an expression for R inverse? Well, of course, you use the formula for the inverse of a product. If I have space, I'll write it. <laughs> well, and I do. If you have, doesn't matter how many, one, two, three, or more, if you have a product of several matrices and you need to invert that product, and they're all square and invertible, well, they have to be square and invertible, then the result will be the product of the individual inverses, but in the opposite order, which is a great metaphor in life. Because if you perform three actions and want, then want to undo them, you have to undo them in opposite order. Everybody knows that, right? If you put on clothes, went to the store, and realized, and you bought something, and then you realized you didn't want it, you have to return it, come back, and take your clothes off, right? You can't, you have to do it. It started out so innocent. And what's really so nice about these, they're, each one of them is easy to invert. I just have to write their inverses in the opposite order. I'm not going to review the elementary matrix way of doing all of this, but you'll know. You'll, you'll be able to review and do it. So R equals, okay, I'll take my time and write it neatly, okay? And these two can easily be combined, just the three goes here. Because if you once again apply the elementary matrix logic, thinking of this one as the action, it says add of three of column one to column two. So add three of column one to column two just puts a three here. I'll scratch it in. And these guys multiply the rows of the resulting matrix. So let me just write down what it is. And A equals QR. If I had the space, I would write A, this matrix, equals this matrix times this matrix. And that's the QR decomposition. And can I just tell you one amazing thing you would never expect about the QR decomposition? Yes, it's nice because it captures the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure. But here's what will happen if you do something. Here's an amazing thing will happen if you try it. Take a three by three matrix in MATLAB and ask for its eigenvalues. Pick, pick a good one with only positive eigenvalues. There are a million ways of doing it. I'll tell you at another time. And evaluate its QR decomposition. And MATLAB will give you Q and R back. And then multiply those two matrices in the opposite order, R, Q. And then take this new matrix and find its QR decomposition and then do it again. And then find the QR decomposition again and multiply Q and there are in the opposite order. And keep doing it. And you will see the eigenvalues begin to appear on the diagonal of the matrix. Total magic. Couldn't be a simpler al algorithm. QR, multiply in the reverse order, repeat. Isn't it amazing? And you will just see more likely than not, you will see the eigenvalues slowly appear on the diagonal, and sometimes not so slowly. <laughs>